you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shari Aqil. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received today at Rafah Palace Reverend Johnny Moore in the presence of the Minister of Work and Social Development Jamil Hamidan. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of strengthening bilateral cooperation and communication to enhance the value of peace and coexistence to overcome all challenges. He praised the efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in encouraging the approach of coexistence in Bahraini society and added that Bahrain has adopted throughout its history different religions, sects, and cultures. He said that Bahrain's keenness to maintain the principles of pluralism, openness, and mutual respect, as well as the awareness of the one family principle in the hearts of the people of Bahrain, is what supports the security and stability of the kingdom and leads to achieving further progress and prosperity under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King. Reverend Johnny Moore expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness and praised the leading role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in maintaining the values of coexistence, tolerance and respect, affirming the importance of the Kingdom's support and efforts in this field. The Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, received at its headquarters in Rafah a number of Arab and foreign ambassadors to Bahrain for a meeting to discuss the Kingdom's achievements in Bahraini women's progress in various fields and on all levels. The Secretary General of the SCW, Halil Ansari, conveyed the greetings of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to the ambassadors and her wishes to increase these meetings for the benefit of Arab women. Al Ansari highlighted the historic relations between Bahrain and all brotherly and friendly countries, noting that the Kingdom joined many cooperation agreements and memorandums of understanding with them, which aim to exchange expertise and enhance common stances in various fields. She affirmed that the SCW broadened its work scale from the national to international and had received the attention of Arab and European countries stating that the SCW is keen on broadening its cooperation horizons with all Arab organizations, institutions and bodies related to women issues. She highlighted the role of the UN and its specialized agencies in supporting and adopting the Kingdom's initiatives on the fields of highlighting the progress of women. She explained that for the first time on the Arab level, Bahrain delivered the speech of Manama Declaration in the opening session of the work of the UN's Commission on the status, rather, the status of women in New York. Al Ansari also talked about the selection of Bahrain as the capital of Arab women for this year, urging the Arab countries through the ambassadors to enhance their participation in this event, which will commence from the Kingdom and which will switch to other capitals annually. For their part, the ambassadors hailed the importance of SCW as an organization that was launched in Bahrain and was able in 15 years to broaden its work and accumulate expertise, expressing admiration and appreciation for the gains of Bahraini women under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the directors of His Royal Highness, or rather Her Royal Highness, Sheikh Sabika. They emphasized their readiness to enhance cooperation with organizations that represent women in their countries and the SCW to achieve the interests of Arab women. Organized by the Shura and Representative Councils, the Food and Water Security Concerns in the Gulf Cooperation Council Countries Forum took place today, during which Representative Council Speaker Ahmed al Mulla confirmed the need to raise environmental, legislative and cultural awareness of the issues and Shura Council Speaker Ali Saleh highlighted the necessity of paying more attention to the environment as a main contributor to economic development. More in this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Nothing can be more critical than water and food. The shortage can literally be a life or death issue. The world's supplies are threatened by growing levels of pollution and rapidly increasing demands. The forum held today sheds light on ways of dealing with food and water security concerns in the region and raises people's awareness. GCC countries urgently need to re-examine the treatment of water and food security in all its aspects. Starting with laws and legislations, through alternatives and techniques to increase environmental awareness. Members of the Shura and Representatives Councils were exchanging ideas and looking forward to finding solutions. These two resources facing so many challenges and scarcity and we know that the, uh, these two need to be uh, 
taken into consideration in order to have enough uh, water and food for the future generation. To make sure that the food and water uh, sustainable for all the people in GCC. So uh, that's why this conference is there in order to sit together and develop a strategic, a clear strategy uh, for the people in GCC countries in order to feel that they are safe. They weren't only concerned with solutions and topics closure. Translating the ideas into a serious practical implementation plan was their goal. The solution in a way of implementing the law and regulation and how good these laws, how cover they cover all the issues and how, as I mentioned, practical are these issues. And then we need a strategy, we need plans, we need action plans to be implemented. It's not a matter of uh, setting a strategy and have a good and, and excellent strategy without action plan. Not only from Bahrain, from multiple GCC countries as well, all united to face those critical issues. Very serious uh, challenges uh, uh, about the water and the food uh, shortage. Uh, we have been here to find out any solutions uh, about these uh, problems. And uh, I think there is uh, many papers uh, provided by this conference. Uh, we will get uh, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge to help us to achieve our uh, uh, aims. Many visions, suggestions and recommendations emerged during the forum in order to optimally deal with the available resources and preserve the rights of future generations. When we exaggerate the importance of something, we compare it with water and food, the two elements essential for life being crucial national security concerns. Gathered representatives from GCC through our councils in a forum here in Bahrain to discuss the risks, precautions and solutions. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghafoor. The second edition of the Dentist Lifestyle Conference and Exhibition held under the patronage of Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, President of the Supreme Council for Health, Open today at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center and aims to focus on everything that is related to dentist work, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle. Dentists from over 20 countries across the globe participated in the two-day Dentist Lifestyle Conference and Exhibition, which focuses on enhancing Bahrain's potential as a medical tourism destination and showcases the importance of providing dentists with a healthy lifestyle. The conference sessions were moderated by international experts and professionals in medicine and dental and included a series of lectures, workshops and meetings highlighting recent enhancements in the dental field. The conference also highlighted the dentist's academic social and work life in addition to featuring a panel discussion with well-known healthcare figures. On the sidelines of the conference, an exhibition is being held bringing together various companies from Bahrain, the GCC countries and the United States to showcase their products. Actually, I think this uh, you know a continuation of the previous one, and actually that's much more you know uh, the activities more and the uh, you know the participation is more, and I think that's actually the development of this uh, activity. And I hope that every year actually having this conference and you know it is increasing and you know uh, would have more emphasis in different kinds of things. And I think you know the question of life of uh, the dentist actually that's life of any kind of you know person working in the medical field. Actually, the most important thing in this activity actually is the diligence. Diligence means and to concentrate on all the details in what you are doing. And actually that's been very important in, uh, you know, in, in practicing uh, medicine because you know, practicing medicine means you are responsible about uh, people's health and uh, people's safety and of course people's life. And that's very important and should be taken very seriously. And that's I think what the message of this uh, conference. I'm very happy today to be part of the DLS and uh, to be my lecture, the first lecture in DLS. And uh, what I like it about the DLS is that it's a different type of uh, conferences. They concentrate about the dentist life, not only about the medical information or the scientific uh, lecture. There is a lecture for uh, life coaching, there is a lecture for dietitian, how to uh, improve your life as a dentist. So it's not only about the uh, scientific stuff, it's also, it's only, it's also about uh, how to live in a proper life uh, as a dentist. I'm, look, I'm really happy because uh, I came here to present um, 
my topic, which is uh, the importance and the possibilities of lingual orthodontics. And I found everything uh, from the organization, from my stay in Bahrain, uh, the people uh, treating us really, really well. And um, as I said, my topic is important for me to present it here because uh, it's a new, let's say it's a new technique uh, within, within the orthodontics, uh, which is, uh, you know, lingual orthodontics. It's the most aesthetic um, treatment that you can do orthodontically. We as Invisalign, we try to, uh, to in enrich our uh, reach and, uh, and we look at this event as a place where many people come and uh, get to uh, know our product uh, as a, an alter alternative to wires and brackets. And uh, we feel it's important to have the presence and be among uh, the professionals. And we can explain more about our product and hopefully be able to partner with them and grow uh, this great market in Bahrain further than we have been able to do so far. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khaled bin Ali Al Khalifa, opened the fourth ministerial meeting for Islamic Affairs and Endowments of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The meeting discussed issues including ways of combating terrorism and protecting the young generation from its repercussions. How to uh, combat extremism. Extremism in the sense that it's a, a catering an environment of uh, alienation, uh, catering an, an environment of violence or denying the others. Uh, these kind of uh, uh, extremist ideas, how can we deal with it in the field of uh, Islamic religion? Uh, how to promote tolerance, coexistence. And I think these are issues that are already uh, in uh, pressing in, 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 at this time. Uh, what we managed to do is we put mechanisms uh, on the GCC, we adopted today mechanisms uh, that uh, caters for the promotion of uh, tolerance in, in, in the region and to guarantee that uh, all the religious men, and especially the youth as well, that, that, that receiving some kind of jurisprudence or, 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 or uh, opinions from some religious men, that they will not be used for any kind of extremist uh, uh, environment, let's say. Uh, so that's why today we dealt with this. We, uh, we, we adopted uh, these kind of mechanisms. Uh, on the uh, second part, we also uh, discussed uh, issues related to endowments. Uh, one of the things is how to make endowments more uh, effective in uh, building our uh, national economies uh, in the GCC. Uh, how to change the traditional view uh, or, or means of, uh, of making endowments uh, and how to make it more effective in uh, the build-up of, of our nations. Teams Influx, Olina and Team One swam to victory yesterday evening in the Bahrain finals of Microsoft's Imagine Cup 2017, a global technology competition that aims to deliver educational, entrepreneurial and employment opportunities for youth through the acquisition of critical skills. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Since its inception, Imagine Cup has become a global phenomenon. This year, the Bahrain National Finals round of the premier competition, held in strategic partnership with Temkin and supported by partners including the UNDP, Ministry of Youth and Sports, Startup Bahrain and CH9, provides a platform for young Bahrainis to showcase innovative, world-changing solutions. It's very important to have such a competition in Bahrain. Uh, it empowers innovation, it empowers uh, students to think, specifically uh, now that the digital transformation is happening and it's becoming the core of the new economy. So actually the new definition of literacy is whether students know uh, how, to, uh, how, to, how to compete in such a competition or not. There is an emphasis on entrepreneurship, so uh, it's very important to uh, encourage our students to learn how to be entrepreneurs. And Part of this is to understand how to develop on a mobile-first, cloud-first world. Tim Keen uh, supported um, uh, and sponsored this uh, competition um, like it did in the past few years because it believes supporting and sponsoring these type of initiatives will encourage a large number of students uh, to participate and basically show their innovative skills. Um, today we've seen a group of uh, groups of students uh, with very creative ideas. All projects were scored by a panel of expert judges from various industries competing to represent Bahrain on a global platform. The Imagine Cup competition endorses the spirit of innovation in line with Bahrain's 2030 vision, equipping the talented youth with necessary skills that will allow them to thrive in dynamic global environment. 
it is amazing feeling. I can't express it. And from uh, the difference of last year and this year is like the categories got merged. It was a lot tougher this year and we worked day and night and we could see our fruit coming up. Our project is actually uh, eliminating the fear of public speaking, uh, letting a user to have a comfortable stage appearance uh, through the use of heart rate and uh, HoloLens as well as of uh, virtual reality. Um, we're committed to supporting young people to gain the skills required for success in the 21st century and um, we have the responsibility of nurturing the youth and are pleased to share this with Microsoft um, this year and we hope that we'll be able to support and be part of this um, wonderful experience in the years to come. As the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, we'd like to engage youth in such competitions, you know, just for them to be able to um, mingle together and nurture these kinds of skills for the future. With more than 1.75 million students from over 190 countries participating, the event aims to provide the youth of Bahrain with an opportunity to network with many other young passionate people and learn about the importance of creativity by leveraging technology and ultimately contribute towards a smarter future. In its 15th year and its 10th anniversary in the heart of the region, Imagine Cup continues to celebrate Bahraini talent, embodying the spirit of student innovation. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim.